and welcome to Coach's Corner. Again, we're here today with our head track coach. He also coaches winter track for us. He's also involved in cross country and he's one of our assistant coaches in cross country, Coach Tim McCall. We'd like to welcome him here today. And Coach, I have one question for you. The first question we have for you is where did you begin your coaching career and why did you become a coach? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, I uh, began my coaching career at the uh, uh, right out of college, right after I uh, graduated from college, and I uh, got my first teaching job at uh, a boarding school in Massachusetts, uh, Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts. And um, part of the uh, part of my job just contract was I had to coach, so that you know, <laughs> sort of explained uh, how I got started. But um, it was uh, I was given the choice after the fall season to uh, sort of pick up their sort of um, uh, a, 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 a sort of an incomplete winter, winter team. So I was able to uh, sort of have a, uh, bring that team into sort of a full season. And then I carried on um, and I was uh, the assistant, one of the assistant coaches uh, in the spring season. So I had a full year of coaching um, running events there. And um, ever since then at every school that I've been at, uh, I've been involved in coaching uh, cross country uh, and, and track over the past uh, 10 years. So coach, were there mentors in your career that you model your coaching style after? Sure. So um, the first uh, coach that I assisted um, at, at Andover was a man named uh, uh, John Stableford. And uh, I would say that um, in terms of um, my uh, approach, sort of my vision of what a uh, coach looks like, a lot of it is rooted in um, the work that, uh, or the, the uh, coach Stableford's uh, coaching style. He was, um, it was a head coach, but he was sort of a, um, uh, a, a soft-spoken head coach um, who sort of let action speak for themselves. Um, he himself was uh, an, an intense, uh, a, an accomplished uh, a runner and his running and what he, uh, he ran the, uh, uh, every year he would run the Boston Marathon and then a month later he'd run the Mount Washington Road Race. And if you don't know what that is, I encourage you to look it up. It's a seven mile race up Mount Washington. Um, and he sort of let his, uh, um, his efforts uh, speak for himself and he sort of drew his, his, um, his passion for running, drew his, uh, these teams uh, together around him. So I, uh, I model a lot of how I approach coaching around uh, uh, what I learned from uh, Coach Stableford. Um, and I also have to say, I, I learned a ton about coaching from uh, NA's own uh, Coach Oleski uh, during the year that I spent uh, working with him uh, too. His, uh, his organization, his passion, and his, um, uh, his uh, sort of commitment to building a competitive program um, uh, also uh, rubbed off on me during my, uh, my year working with him. That's great, Coach. So. We've talked a little bit about coaches and about mentors. So what do you look for in the ideal student athlete in your particular sport? So I think the, uh, when I think of the runners that I've worked with that have been um, uh, the most successful, uh, these are runners that um, have been able to bring uh, sort of a broad sense of uh, balance to their training. You know, they can keep, um, uh, you know, they can keep the big picture in mind so they can keep they can look at their the season in its entirety and not get too bogged down in any one race and realize what their end goal is and what they need to do over the course of a um, over a 10 week period to reach that end goal um, and not get too um, not let one race or not let one workout sort of throw them uh, too much you know um, and being able to sort of keep their um, you know, keep their focus on, on the end. Uh, and um, uh, that sort of sense of balance, uh, of course, that takes a great deal of mental uh, uh, um, rigor. And it also takes a great deal of, um, you have to have the physical training underneath you to sort of have that type of balance. But um, that is sort of what I hope to instill in my athletes over their, you know, over their years uh, in the program. Um, and that's what I would say is sort of what I would, you know, when I think of my ideal athlete, that's what I, that's what I think of. So coach, as you started to talk about that, you spoke about some of the values and, and the value of 
of really being able to to commit to something. So tell us about the other values that you instill in your players. Um, so I, you know, I think uh, commitment over a long term, over a many year period, uh, is is important. One of my other big uh, values is um, uh, uh, respect, and not just sort of respect for um, teammates, not just respect for me, but respect for competition too. And every time you, and respect for school, you know, every time you step on onto the track, every time you step onto that starting line, um, you know, it doesn't matter uh, who is with you. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter who is next to you. You you respect that person for um, the work that they've uh, done to get to get to that same spot that you are um, at. And uh, uh, by standing on that line, by wearing the school uniform, um, you know, you, you are an ambassador, not just for the NA track program, but you're an ambassador for, uh, uh, for NA. So um, I think that 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 idea of um, respect also plays a, uh, a, a huge role. Um, it, it's another value that I um, that, that matters uh, a lot to me. Thanks for that, coach. So the question that we've asked everybody, and, and it's almost got an eye roll every single time we've asked it, is how has your program been impacted? And how has your program handled the difficulties of 2020? The, the spring season didn't happen. So that was, uh, uh, and of course, um, you know, the seniors who graduated last year did not have the opportunity to uh, have a senior season. No one had that senior season. Um, you know, that was a, um, you know, that was a sort of a, a bitter pill for everyone to swallow. Um, Despite that, uh, you know the uh, the track team last spring was incredibly uh, resilient. Um, we ha we would have weekly check ins. Um, we found different ways to sort of redefine uh, success over the course of the season. Uh, I had kids decide that um, you know kids would never run more than a, a hundred meter dash. Decide well, I want to I mean, run a five k. You know that's going to be my goal for the spring, and they were able to commit to doing that training and run a five k by the end of the season. I had. Uh, one senior um, decided that even though uh, he wasn't going to have the opportunity to uh, race on uh, in, in a on NA's track, he was going to go to um, and train on a local town track that was open uh, to try to beat his PR in the 3200 uh, lat, you know, during his junior year. And he was able to do that. And that was uh, um, incredibly uh, Im impressive to see uh, him commit to and him uh, achieve over the course of the spring. Um, but I, you know, uh, the, the team was, um, uh, was able to sort of, uh, in a sense, roll with the punches, um, sort of acknowledge the disappointment, but then, um, uh, find ways to keep, keep connected and, uh, keep, um, training and pushing and motivating each other, uh, over the course of the, uh, um, over last spring, uh. And you know, looking forward, you know, there, this the upcoming indoor season, you know, still, uh, it looks, you know, there's, it'll happen that we know, but you know, what it will look like, there's still a lot of unknowns, and um, uh, e even looking forward into the spring, you know, there are a lot of unknowns. But I think the the most impressive thing is people, you know, despite those unknowns, you know, the teams want to come together, the teams want to work in whatever way is safe for them to work. Um, and they're willing to make those commitments to each other to sort of push each other and train um, in whatever form that that shapes up in. Great, thank you, Coach. I appreciate that. Um, why why should a prospective student join Newark Academy? You know, I, I can speak specifically to the uh, um, you know the the running programs uh, at NA, um, the you know the, the cross country and track and field programs. Um, and what I what I would say is uh, all those. Uh, programs um, sort of um, almost develop a family-like uh, um, feel. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, what I think specifically to track, um, it's one of the largest teams that the school has um, and it has such a wide variety of athletes uh, on it. Um, I think it's one of the more sort of, I think that that's one of the uh, neat, um, you know, concepts of track. It's not just one type of athlete that you have that you have on on the team. You know, you have everyone from throwers to jumpers to hurdlers to sprinters to uh, to distance runners, and even within those different um, 
different events. They're sort of different types. Um, you know, there's sort of longer distance sprinters and shorter distance sprinters. There's 3,200 meters and then there are 800 uh, meter runners. And, you know, there, there are all these different um, variations of athletes, even within the sort of broad categories. And um, that brings a, a ton of different kids together. Um, uh, and they, uh, um, having them all you know, during other seasons, these are kids who are on different teams and sometimes teams that are competing for attention, but during the spring season, they're all on the same team. Uh, and it, it sort of fosters a sense of camaraderie um, and, uh, uh, and friendship across a whole lot of different uh, ability levels. So I, I think that that's one of the, uh, you know, the, the coolest um, aspects of uh, track at NA. And So coach, finally, what piece of advice would you give to a young coach who's just starting their career in coaching? The, the biggest thing that um, you need is you, you need to uh, have, um, you have to have some confidence and you, you have to sort of ha know what your vision is for your program. Um, and uh, you have to sort of be confident in how you articulate that, that vision to, uh, to everyone. Um, uh, it, uh, you don't need to be uh, allowed um, uh, sort of uh, shouter of your of your vision for your program. You just have to be confident in how you are articulate it. Um, well, Coach McCall, thank you so much for your time uh, this afternoon. Uh, I will give you the last word. I, I would just like to encourage all of our athletes. You know, this whole year we've we've all had to sort of be resilient and nimble and responding to a ton of different um, uh, you know historic circumstances. Uh, I'd like to continue encouraging our athletes to. Uh, continue to bring that sort of the, the freshness that they brought to the fall with them throughout the year. Um, you know, despite the challenges we had uh, across the board, we had, um, you know, uh, we, we made the best of the fall. And I would just like to encourage all, all of our athletes to sort of keep being creative in how they define success. Um, and if they do that, we're, we're bound to have um, great winter and spring seasons.